This is my new 2023 Mac Studio with an M2 Max chip and it's officially the best computer I've ever owned. I've been using it primarily for photo and video editing as well as running my social media and content creation agency. And for all those cases, there's many things that I love about this computer and just a couple things that I don't. And today I wanna to dive into what my experience has been like using the M2 Max Max Studio what the computer does well and what it doesn't do so well. And in this video, I'm not gonna be getting into benchmarks and comparisons because there's many videos out there for that, but rather I wanna give you a real world review after using it for a few months. I'll be showing you some examples of how I use it and how it performs so you can get a better idea of its capabilities. So if you're someone that's looking to pick one of these up or you wanna compare yours with mine, stick around. Let's get into it. But before I begin, if you can do me the favor of hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. If you're like me and you're someone that heavily relies on your computer for the work that you do, then I'm sure you've encountered a time where your computer has slowed you down. Now, this is normal with technology because it advances so quickly, but it's something that I've struggled with time and time again. In the past, I've been jumping between Apple and Windows machines, all in search of a computer that's capable of handling my workflow. And each time I've done it, I've had to make a compromise with price, portability or performance. My previous solution to this problem was to switch to a custom built PC, which was finally capable of handling everything that I threw at it, photo and video editing without slowing me down. However, it too came with some disadvantages. Despite being very familiar with Windows and having used it since I was a little kid, I gotta say I'm not a big fan of the operating system and having a MacBook and an iPhone and them not being able to communicate to my Windows computer has just created some unexpected bottlenecks with my workflow. For example, not being able to use AirDrop, which is a tool that I use every single day. Or how about the need to format my hard drives differently for Apple and for Windows, which is just annoying. If you're someone that uses Windows and you're curious about the specs, I was using a Ryzen 2700X eight core processor with 32 gigabytes of RAM and an Nvidia GeForce RTX 2060. And my PC served me really, really well. And it still is a very capable computer Computer. However, it's not able to edit in 4K without dropping frames, and so when I looked at the price of a new graphics card, I wasn't convinced that that was the right move. So enter Seb's four month dilemma. Do I get a new graphics card for $2,000 and continue to struggle without AirDrop and hard drive formats, or do I just go for Apple? And if I go for Apple, which computer do I choose? Do I get a Mac mini and then upgrade in a few years, or do I get a MacBook Pro? but then again, I already have one, and wow, they're not cheap. Or do I go for the Mac Studio? It's more powerful than a MacBook Pro and cheaper, and considering that I have a mint condition 2017 MacBook Pro, do I really need another laptop? I decided to go for the Mac Studio M2 Max with 12 core CPU, 30 core GPU, two terabytes of internal storage, and 64 gigabytes of RAM, which provides me far more value for a small compromise in price compared to the 4090. So stick around because I'll be talking about why it shows 64 gigabytes and two terabytes of SSD. Let's get into the design of the Mac Studio. It blows my mind how such a powerful computer can fit into such a small form factor. My PC alone is like 10 times bigger and probably 10 times less powerful than my Mac Studio. As you may already know, the M2 Max Mac Studio has two USB-A ports, four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet, an HDMI port capable of one display at 8K resolution at 60 Hertz, or a 4K resolution display at 240 Hertz. And of course as well, it comes with a 3.5 headphone jack. Above the ports and under the computer are the fan vents. The studio is extremely quiet no matter what I'm doing. And I really like that about this computer. And at the front, we have two USB-C ports and an SD card reader. And I do use all of the rear ports. One of them is for my monitor, which also serves as a USB 3 hub, and the other three are for external hard drives. As for the two USB 3 ports, those are for my LED lights and another one for a USB 3 hub. As for the front ports, I like to keep these available for whenever I need to plug in more drives, as it's not very aesthetic or practical to have wires hanging out of the front all the time. The base of the computer is made of a hard plastic ring, which I have mixed thoughts about, and I'll be sharing some of those with you in a minute. Other than that, the computer is pretty straightforward. It's sleek, beautiful, small, and practical. Now, moving on to what you probably clicked on this video for, how does the M2 Max 
Mac Studio hold up with video editing. So let's put it to the test. I normally film my videos with my Sony a7 III, which is capable of 8-bit 4K XAVCS MP4 video at 30 frames per second. Stepping things up a notch, I also ran a test with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K using B-RAW to see how it would hold up. And once again, the timeline is buttery smooth regardless of any effects or color grading applied to the clips. And to take things up a step further, I reached out to my friend, colleague, filmmaker, and YouTuber, Julian Pierre, for some sample 4.6K B-RAW footage from his Ursa Mini Pro G2. And once again, the timeline is buttery smooth regardless of any effects or color grading applied to the clips. And you have no idea how much this means to me. Earlier this year, I was blessed with the opportunity to work for Uber on a corporate video production in Mexico City. At the time, I didn't yet own the Mac Studio and I was still using my PC. We filmed over two terabytes of video with Blackmagic Cinema cameras in 4K B-RAW. And as you may assume, my PC was unable to handle the footage efficiently. My NVIDIA 2060 GPU was constantly running at 100% and DaVinci Resolve ended up crashing a whole bunch of times. Things got even worse when I started to color grade and apply effects to the audio. So I had to find a workaround and I did it by lowering my timeline resolution to 1080p, creating ProRes proxies and using a smart cache. But all of these things took away from my otherwise very efficient editing workflow. Thankfully, Jazz had just purchased an M1 Pro MacBook Pro and she was nice enough to lend it to me to render out some of the files ridiculously fast. However, when I was using Jazz's M1 MacBook Pro, I did encounter a few bottlenecks with her 16 gigabytes of RAM. It made it very difficult to multitask, so I did find myself having to close down other apps while I was editing in order to avoid DaVinci Resolve crashing on me. And this is the main reason why I chose to go for the 64 gigabyte RAM upgrade. On my PC, I was using 32 gigabytes of DDR4, which really helped me with multitasking. But buying a Mac Studio, I wanted to future-proof myself with extra memory to ensure that the Mac Studio serves me for a very long time. Now you may be thinking, well, Apple Silicone uses unified memory, so you don't need that much RAM. But let me tell you, if you run out of RAM as you're currently multitasking on things, it's gonna offload that memory over to your hard drive. And SSD drives have a limited lifespan, especially with Apple drives, being that they're soldered onto the drive, you can't swap these later. So the more that your memory is being used, the lifespan of your computer will shorten. This is why I got 64 gigabytes of RAM and I will basically extend the life of my computer. Now, let's take it back to practical real world usage. If you're creating content for YouTube or social media, you may be shooting more compressed file formats like MP4. So let me show you some rendering times. It took my Mac Studio 17 minutes to export my last YouTube video, which was 14 minutes of 4K MP4 video. And that's with color grading, effects, titles, and everything. Now, when it comes to social media reels and shorts, it takes me less time to export than it takes me to do anything else. Compared to my MacBook Pro or my PC, where it was taking about 15 to 45 seconds to export a 60 second reel, it now only takes me about five seconds to export videos. So I can basically export them, airdrop them to my phone in a matter of seconds. So if you're somebody that works with video, this computer is definitely gonna speed up your workflow. Now moving on to photo editing. This is an area which I was also extremely excited about, especially with my photography background. I'll start off by sharing that prior to moving to Mexico and starting Awake Abroad Media with my wife, Jazz, I had a real estate marketing business in Vancouver where I was shooting up to seven properties per day, up to seven days a week. And that is a lot of media to handle. My PC did it fairly well but my Mac Studio does it even better and faster. I am blown away at how fast I'm able to export photos on this computer. I recently did a real estate shoot here in Puerto Vallarta and I recorded my export times for you to see. It took me one minute and 25 seconds to export 167 photos in full resolution. And that's a mix of HDR and regular photos, which is pretty fast in my opinion. And it would be even faster if I didn't include the HDR photos into the mix. Also brushes in both Photoshop and Lightroom work in real time. So I don't clog up any of my system resources which is something that I often did on my PC. For any photographers dealing with hundreds or even thousands of photos, this computer will really speed up your workflow. Cause as you know, time is money, baby. And the best part is that you can do other things while you're exporting media. You can export photos at the same time that you export video at the same time that you watch YouTube and send emails. This is truly a multitasking machine 
and nothing seems to phase it. Now, one of the things that I miss most from my PC is gaming. Coming from a PC where I could run Battlefield, Call of Duty, and a bunch of other games, the Mac Studio does not have a lot of games available for it. And this is a shame because it's a very capable computer, but I understand it wasn't made for gaming. And this lack of gaming capabilities are not hardware related, but rather software related. The truth is most of the games out there are designed for consoles or PC. So the options available for Mac are very few. However, the new game porting toolkit will hopefully open up a new world of possibilities for gaming on the Mac Studio. And I really look forward to the new games that will eventually come out. So let's try out some games. I went ahead and downloaded Combat Master from Steam to test out some of the Mac Studios gaming capabilities and I have to say it was phenomenal. Mind you, this isn't the best game out there, nor is it a high resource intensive game like Call of Duty, GTA or Battlefield. But nevertheless, it worked on ultra resolution on my ultra wide monitor. If any of you are gamers and you can help me play Battlefield on this computer, I will be eternally grateful. So as I said at the beginning of this video, there are a couple things that I don't love about this computer. The first one being the base of the computer. It's made of a hard plastic that slides around any time that I plug in an SD card or a hard drive. And this is kind of important because if you're sitting your computer on your desk and you're plugging things in, you don't want your computer to fall. The second thing I don't love about this computer are the speakers. Rod started off in real estate in 2000 only made $9,000 his first year. Although Instagram didn't come up. Honestly, I feel like they could have been made better. Something along the lines of a MacBook Pro with spatial audio. And it's hard for me to believe how certain companies can come out with these tiny little speakers that sound phenomenal. But when it comes to the Mac Studio, a $4,000 or $5,000 computer, it just has the worst speakers possible. The next thing that I don't love about the computer is the amount of ports. It only has four Thunderbolt 4 ports at the back and two at the front as I mentioned, and that's not a lot of ports compared to the ones on my PC, which had eight. For a desktop computer, I would like to see more ports in the computer because I am using all of them. And because it is a desktop computer, I usually have a lot more drives and peripherals plugged into it. Another thing that I don't love about this computer is the fact that the RAM and storage upgrades are ridiculously expensive and you can't upgrade the computer in the future. I paid an additional $500 for 64 gigabytes of RAM and $750 for an additional two terabytes of storage. Last but not least, the thing that I don't love, which I can't do anything about, is how quickly Apple is releasing the new chips. It's December 2023 and the M3 chip is already out for the MacBook Pros and it's coming soon for the Mac Studios. Now, I'm all for rapid innovation, but at the price point of Apple computers, it's a little disheartening to have invested into such an expensive computer and then the next generation comes out right away. But such is life. I just think they kind of dilute the hype of the machines, which I could only hope would last a little bit longer than a few months. However, don't be fooled by materialistic shiny object syndrome. The M2 Max Mac Studio is a very capable computer that is gonna last me or you a very long time. So who is this computer for? In my opinion, the Mac Studio is quite overkill for most people. It's very powerful and very expensive, and chances are that if you don't have a need for it, you're just not gonna be using it to its full potential, in which case I feel like there are cheaper and incredibly powerful options available for you, such as the Mac Mini or any of the new M2 or M3 chips. But if you're a wedding event or commercial photographer who takes high megapixel photos in Mac Massive amounts, I think this computer is for you. Or if you're a commercial videographer, consistent YouTuber, or you use cinema cameras for your videos, I feel like this computer is for you. Or if you're another type of creative professional or even a business owner needing speed and power, then this computer is gonna serve you really well. I do recommend that you consider upgrading your RAM and your storage when you buy it, just for longevity. All right, so that concludes my review of the M2 Max Mac Studio for creative professionals, photographers, videographers, social media marketers, and business owners needing a machine to handle it all. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel and sharing your thoughts with me below. Do you own a Mac Studio? If so, what are you using it for? And how is it performing? I would really love to hear your take and I'm sure by sharing your experience, you're gonna be helping others in the comment section who are stuck with the same dilemma that I had, whether they should buy the Mac Studio or one of the other options out there. And with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.